Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to try to see if or what's going on with this Commodore 64. Um, I got this one uh, from eBay, and uh, this came in today. Uh, bought this as a parts untested, um, and you know, I've been lucky with these, buying them as parts untested. But this one, I'm a little worried about. Uh, there's no screws. Um, it, it, the, the case has really bad kind of cosmetic damage on it. Very yellowed. Um, but you know what? Let's just, let's plug it in. See what we got. If we get anything at all. All right. So here we go. All right. So we get a black screen. That could be any number of things. Um, so let's open it up. Since there are no screws in here, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the keyboard. At least I think I am. Jesus. Wait a minute. There's an actual tab on this. Oh, cool. Alright. Okay. So, this thing looks like it has a heat shield, or I don't know what these are called heat shields, ground shields, whatever. It's got a shield, RF shield. Um,. You can never really tell if these have been removed before or not. There's some dust in here for sure. Um, but, uh, I mean, all in all, it looks okay. We've got both the CIAs are socketed. The uh, basic, the kernel, and the character generator ROM uh, socketed, uh, 6510 socketed got a PLA socketed and a SID chip socketed. Um, none of the RAM is socketed. I guess the first thing we could do is check for correct voltages. So let's see. All right. Let's turn this thing on. Let's see what we get. The user port. So we're getting four point. Let me just put this over here so you guys can see. And that's not helpful. All right. Here we go. So we're getting. 4.94, uh, it's a little lower than I'm used to seeing, but I mean, it's probably not a bad thing. So let's have a look at the uh, oh, the voltage regulators. So we got three output. Oops. To this ground. Turn it off. Put that backwards. Alright, so we got 5 volts, the voltage regulator. At the 5 volt voltage regulator, which is fine. And 12 volts, the 12 volt regulator. So voltages are good. Alright, so let's do some. Let's do some obvious things here. I'm going to pull the CIA chips and I'm going to pull the SID chip since uh, they're already not uh, they're already socketed, so I might as well try those. Just had to grab my tool, and while I was at it, I went ahead and grabbed a replacement PLA and a replacement SID chip. So I'm not using original parts here. These are designed uh, by me. So if you need a replacement PLA or a replacement SID or even replacement uh, ROMs, uh, feel free to 
leave me a comment and uh, or, or go to my store and, and buy them there. Um, I also have an eBay page and Etsy page. All the links are down below. So let's remove these. I said chips. Also, this comes in very handy. I'll leave a link to that down below as well. Alright, so we'll pull the CIAs. We don't actually need those to get a boot screen. We don't need the SID. Even though none of that stuff felt like it was getting incredibly hot. We need the CPU. We need the PLA. Alright, let's have another look here. Okay, still a black screen. So, and the other thing I didn't hear was the popping sound from the SID, which of course the SID is out now, but that made me realize that we did hear a popping sound from the SID, which might mean the SID's still good. So let's grab this PLA. Using these single wipe sockets in here, uh, which I'm not particularly fond of. They don't um, do a real good job at making contacts. They wear out really fast. Try this. And there we go, with the replacement PLA. I have a working Commodore 64. Now we don't have a blinking cursor because there's uh, no CIA chip for that, right? So this, this CIA chip is first, uh, I think it's U1. We need that to get a flashing cursor. Let's put that back in. Alright, there's our flashing cursor, so that's good. Let's go ahead and put the other CIA chip in. I always get a little sad when I find a dead PLA. They're getting harder and harder to come by, the originals. Okay, still working. Um, let's fire it up with the original SID. I'm curious. Alright. Let's fire it up with the original SID and actually put something in to play some sound. Okay, so that's the normal behavior here. We're just waiting for the game to load. Now it's not normal behavior. Let's try that again. Also this seems super tight. Okay, that's more normal. The other time it was wrong. Okay, cool. Sounds pretty decent. Now I'm going to have to get a controller. game so you can't judge me. Okay, I'm true to my word here. 
so there you have it. Uh, that was a really easy fix, honestly. Um, I'm gonna basically run this through diagnostics. I'm gonna put a diagnostics cartridge in and just let it run for a couple hours. Um, the uh, I can feel. All the chips are normal temperature-wise. Uh, this, I don't even know why I'm feeling. This is cold, always cold to the touch. Um, so yeah, I mean, sometimes it's something as simple as just replacing the PLA chip. Uh, uh, it looks like a bunch of things have been actually done to this. So aside from the sockets, we also have this uh, bridge rectifier. Um, it doesn't look factory for sure. Uh, the factory bridge rectifiers, you know, they sat all the way down to the board. So my guess is, is that they replaced this. Uh, they replaced it or someone else replaced it. Then again, um, I mean, I don't know like who had this before me, but this is, this is not a, a good way of, you know, doing a repair job. You don't just, you know, cut, cut this. Um, you usually, this is weird because it doesn't seem it's off. Anyways, so you would have desoldered this um, and, and put it back the right way. Anyway, so my next steps uh, with this would be to dust it all out, right? Take the board out, dust it all out, clean the case inside underneath, and uh, check all of these capacitors uh, for just, you know, uh, make sure that their values are within spec. This resistor looks extremely janky. I mean, look, this is on top of this other one here. Um, I'll probably do uh, a quick check and make sure that uh, everything else is how it's supposed to be. Um, like I said, I'm gonna run the diagnostic cartridge, uh, make sure that uh, all the memory looks good. I'm gonna hook up the harness and make sure that we're getting everything that we're supposed to on the user port, the data port, and uh, Make sure that we can, or the serial connections work with the drive. Uh, do some more testing with the SID chip. And then, uh, finally, what I'll do is I'll put a heat sink on this chip. Uh, because the 6581s are, are, get, are becoming extremely rare. And, and just, you know, you would be putting a disservice to this chip if you sent it back out into the wild without a heat sink on it uh, to preserve its life. Uh, same thing with the uh, 6510. I'm going to put a heatsink on that. Uh, probably not these. Uh, these are easy to replace and, and get, uh, even with modern components. CIAs don't really get that hot. Uh, the VIC chip, I'll probably take out the cover. Uh, let's see if we can do that really quick. Because I wanted to see what we've got under here. Don't judge me. All right. Okay, it's an R8 version of the uh, VIC chip. So that's cool. Um, 407 board, so it's an earlier board, 83. So once I get it all done, cleaned up, all checked out, um, I'll leave this PLA chip in it, because this is, uh, like I said, this is a, a, a drop-in replacement for the PLA that was in there. Uh, works perfectly. I've uh, tested it with uh, Zuper's Axon and some other tests to make sure this PLA is 100% is compatible. So, once I get everything done and cleaned up, then uh, I'll put it all together, make sure that the, uh, this thing, holy crap, yeah, let's talk about this for a minute. So, the keys are super yellow, right? Although, physically, they look to be in pretty good condition. Um, the stickers look like they're in great condition, which is good. And this can maybe be cleaned up a little bit, but it's it's gonna be rough. Um, and I don't know what the hell. There must have been like a cable or something laying around it, or this is just a weird way to. <laughs> it's just a weird thing here. So. I do have another one of these, so maybe I'll just take this keyboard out and put it into there. Uh, so I don't know yet, but in either case, this is done. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down. Comments go down below. 
And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one.